Hey, it's Scott Fox from ExpertWebsiteReviews.com and ClickMillionaires.com. We're going to talk today about this website you can see here, DRC Studio. This is the website of my new friend Ralph Sharp. He won this free website review from a charity auction over at ArtFairInsiders.com. And I'm happy to help him out. Today we're going to take a good look at this website and see what we can do to help improve the usability, the product strategy, the marketing, maybe even the search engine optimization, all with the goal of attracting more traffic to Ed's site, Ralph's site, sorry, Ralph's site, and helping him sell more of his very attractive art here. You can see he's a specialist in creating metal sculptures that are really a lot of fun. Uh, whimsical, uh, yet practical, and uh, fairly high priced as well. So he can make some money here if we do this right. So let's see what we can do in this special Click Millionaire's Expert Website Review to get Ralph's website up to the next level. Hey, and by the way, if you want a website review like this of your own, you can go to expertwebsitereviews.com. And if you're running a charity sort of benefit thing and you'd like a donation of one of these free website reviews for your audience, you can let us know. I always do my best to help out charities. That's part of the Click Millionaire's philosophy. <laughs> okay, so let's see now. How do we get back to the home page here? I was clicking around and, all right, well, there's problem number one for you, Ed. How do I get home? Usually the logo is linked up here, and this stuff isn't linked, so I'm having trouble here right at the beginning. Way at the bottom, which is even off the screen, there's a little button that says home. Okay, now let's get started for real. So DRC Studio specializes in what? Well, not real clear, uh, Ed. Uh, here, okay, that's why I was confused. Here it says Ed, but on your email to me, uh, you said Ralph. So I guess it's Ralph Edwards. <laughs> okay, so my apologies for any confusion there, Ed. All right, so um, most websites that are trying to sell something, well, they start out telling you what they're selling. You, what you've got here is unfortunately very small pictures and not particularly informative copy. Um, they also might have a tagline, and that's the one place where your, you, your site here is stepping up, exceptional garden art. So that's what we're talking about here. I would start off, Ed, I'll tell you right up front, I looked around the site already, I would go for a full-scale redesign. I hope that doesn't offend you. You said in your email um, that you know the site needs a lot of work, so <laughs> I'm not going to pull my punches here, my friend. I think you've got some beautiful art, uh, and uh, I think the web could be very receptive to this, but your website, yes, absolutely needs a lot of work. So let's, uh, let's get back to the business here. First of all, your pictures need to be a lot bigger. Uh, if I come here and I don't know what I'm looking at, um, well, that's the answer. I don't know what I'm looking at. What, what is this here? You know, what is this? They're probably obvious to you because you're familiar. Even this thing, this is a fairly large picture. These are dark photos. I think you need better photography, frankly. Um, I can't tell what this stuff is at all. Um, maybe if I'd seen you at an art fair, then I would have an idea of, you know, what I'm looking at here or your friends and relatives and even the people who designed the site uh, have an idea and they think these pictures are big enough, but I'm here to tell you, no way. <laughs> these pictures are, are these pictures are the size of pictures that people were using like 10 years ago or even 15 years ago when we all had uh, low bandwidth dial-up modems. Today, most people have got broadband. Even on our phones, we've got 3 and 4G. These pictures should be, each one of them should be as big as this whole collage you've got here. That would help a lot. So you had some visual impact right away. Next, uh, I'm not real fond of DRC Studio. I don't know what that means. It doesn't have any particular value. Maybe that's of value to you, but um, your URL, D drcartstudio.com, doesn't really say anything. You're not doing yourself any help there. I would go and see if you could find like edsgardenart.com or you know copperfrogs.com or something that had some relationship to your business. Uh, DRC Art Studio doesn't tell us anything. Um, now, you may be wedded to that, so that's a decision for you, but my job here is to kick up the dust a little bit, and you can pick out the pieces that are most helpful to you. That's what we do with these expert website reviews. Okay, so uh, I would reconsider the domain name. You've got to make the pictures a lot bigger. And then the real issue here, honestly, on this homepage, oh, sorry, I'll get to that in a second. One more thing I want to say, the words. You have a bunch of words here, and that's good. Search engines like words. You need to tell them something about what your site is about. But this is very abstract. A word about copper? Uh, I'm not going to pull a punch here, Ed. Who cares? I don't want a word about copper. I want to know what the site's about. Who is, who is Ed? What is he trying to sell me? Why do I want one of these things? You've got to think much more like a merchant here than an artist. And an abstract discussion of the values of copper, I don't think it's going to help you sell very much. Um, I think you need to hit this all a lot harder. And like I said, uh, edsgardenart.com, we have exceptional garden art from the world-renowned, award-winning, world's best garden artist, Ed Sharp. Probably a picture of Ed. 
and then some big pictures of your art. And then as I was driving at with this, this text, this needs to be up at the top so the search engines can find it more easily. And it needs to say something punchy and keyword rich, focused around, I guess, garden art and copper art and, and Ed Sharp uh, and maybe the name of your business. And it's got to say something punchy like gar best garden art uh, available made from copper by hand by the trained artisan Ed Sharp. This stuff rocks and you need to buy some by clicking on the stuff below. <laughs> I know that's a little cheesy, but I'm not talking about too much away from that. Because if you've gone to the trouble at your art fairs and whatever online marketing you're doing to luring people in from the billions of websites that are out there and they finally ended up here, you got to grab them by the throat and be very friendly and polite, but make it clear real quickly, what have you got for them? And, you know, as you know, I think this isn't doing much of that. So um, the other big problem here is that there's nothing for me to click. I come to the site, even if I am interested, assuming I understand what you're doing and that I can see what these tiny little pictures are, what am I going to click on? This isn't clickable, the logo isn't clickable, the slogan isn't clickable, even all these menu titles are not clickable, this word about copper is not clickable. The only clickability on this whole page is these tiny little brown buttons, which are, what, uh, a third of an inch and by an eighth of an inch or something? I mean, these are tiny. So you need to, all these need to be underlined, both for usability, meaning that people can see them and click on them, but also so that the search engines can tell what these links are. You, when you reinforce a link by using certain anchor text, that's what they call it, the link is anchor text. If you said, gar, like this one, garden art, that should be linked, because then when Google came by, they'd say, oh, this site, it says garden art in words. Oh, and it's also a link to an internal page about garden art. Hey, maybe the site is about Ta-da! Garden art. <laughs> That's the sort of signals you need to throw to Google so that they know to rank your your uh, site higher in the search results when people are looking for garden art. So that's the sort of stuff that you need to do. This whole thing needs to be really pumped up, I think, um, commercially, uh, visually, and link-wise especially. Also, the color scheme you're using here, very cool and very copper-ish. But in my experience, the audience for stuff like this, and let's click around. I'm just going to click around a little bit randomly just to show uh, anybody else who sees this what nice stuff you've got here. Because here you do have some bigger pictures on the internal pages. The problem is you're using a color scheme that is really quite dark. And in my experience, and I've done a lot of these for people at ArtFairInsiders.com um, over the years, uh, this, this uh, color scheme is rather dark. And the target audience for art like this is usually people 50 plus, right? They've got the money to be decorating their art with custom, their, their gardens with custom art. You want a high contrast environment with big words so they can see it without having to put on their reading glasses. You don't want to make this difficult for your target customers. The people with money need big fonts and high contrast lighting. Um, so these little brown buttons and especially words like this accessories in brown on black, that is a usability no-no. Now you're the artist here, so if you dig it, man, that's up to you, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just besmirching your artistic vision, <laughs> but as a usability expert, I'm telling you, that's a no-no. You would never see a site of a mainstream retailer that was really focused on making money online use a color scheme like this. So obviously, you don't want to be Walmart. That's <laughs> why you're an artist. But, but just as a tip to you, that would help you a lot in terms of people being able to find stuff and click through, and. Being able to find stuff and click through is, of course, what leads to purchases, and I think that's why you contacted me about this. Now, your About the Artist stuff is nice. Uh, very small font. Again, this is difficult for older folks to read, and the contrast is low. I would pump all that up. I'd get a, a couple more pictures of you. I mean, I guess this is you here, but you're looking at a fish. How about a smiling photo of Ed the Artist? As you well know, I'm sure, when people buy art, they're investing in a relationship with the artist as much as the art object itself. It's kind of a, a souvenir really of their relationship and their belief in your creativity. So I would make a bigger thing of you. You are the star here. Not just the fish, but you, Ed. Let's get your photo out there. In fact, as I said earlier, I would have it on the home page. I'd have you smiling right here and you know, welcome to uh, Ed's exceptional garden art.com. Here's my stuff. It rocks. I'm a cool guy. You need a bunch of this in your garden. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm exaggerating for effect here, but I hope you get the idea. I would make this more personal because if you're selling in art fairs, you're a member of artfairinsiders.com, that big art fair community, then you're used to being out on the street and meeting with people. And you know that personal bond gets you more sales. And you need to do that on the internet as well. All right, what else? Um, the homepage, you know, you're missing the classic mistake of online entrepreneurs who are new to this. 
Uh, you don't have an email collector. You need to be building an email list. You need a big block, and I'm not talking about a little tiny link down here. I'm talking about a big thing, probably, I don't know, what is that? So let's, let's call it uh, 250 pixels wide by 2 inches tall, like a business card size, or maybe not quite that big, but big enough to get people's attention, right here and on every interior page as well that says, sign up for my email list. Because Why? Because you want to build up that email list because in the increasing competition of the Internet, uh, and as you get older, frankly, you're going to want an email list. You're not going to be going out to all these art fairs anymore, right? And frankly, selling online is a lot cheaper. You don't have to fill up your van and drive halfway across the country, stay in a hotel, put up that you know, booth and stay out on the street all day in the heat. Uh, build up a good email list, and that is your retirement fund. So I would put an email collector on every page and offer something to them for signing up, like, you know, I don't know, a behind-the-scenes video, see how I made this, this cool no see -em. That might intrigue people, or the best of all, and works in every industry, a discount. How about 10% off on your first purchase? Uh, sign up to get emails from us. Uh, anything like that. And we can talk more about that if you uh, want to come join us in the Click Millionaires Forum at clickmillionaires.com. This is where I coach people all the time like this, and it's free for people who read my books. So come on over if I can be of help. Um, that sort of incentive is key. Uh, people call it sometimes an ethical bribe, and that's, that's a fine thing, I think. Let's try this. Let's add this to cart and see what happens. I didn't get a chance to do this earlier. Okay, so far, it does nothing. Okay, well, that's not good, obviously. Let's try this one, add to cart. Okay, now that might be a problem because I'm filming at the same time, but if I do view cart, let's see. PayPal objects, your shopping cart is empty. Okay, well, here's some news for you, Ed. Uh, maybe your site isn't working. <laughs> that's a, obviously bad. If your sales are down, this might be why. Um, I don't know, maybe that's just an aberration, but... One way or the other, I'd be real concerned about that, that's for sure. So it looks like you rigged this up to PayPal yourself, and I think that's fine. You're not liable to uh, have people buying six or eight or ten of these at a time anyway without contacting you, so I think that's fine if you um, want to keep doing that. But here's my big recommendation, Ed. Before you spend a lot of time trying to rethink your color palette and the usability issues that I said, and even the size of your photos, I think, here's my punchline, I think that you need to move to a store platform. There are store platforms where you could put all this stuff in and have it managed for you that would have uh, different themes that you could pick, templates essentially, that would take care of the font sizes and the colors and, and they would force you to use bigger pictures, right? Um, all that sort of stuff. So um, what are store platforms I like? Well, I like one that's called bigcommerce.com. They're out of Australia. Um, there's, of course, uh, there's Shopify. You could go to Yahoo Merchant Services, uh, Yahoo Stores, basically. Um, or just Google Stores, online store software. Uh, a lot of these folks are available now, very inexpensively. I would use a hosted service, what they call these days SaaS, Software as a Service. So you'd end up paying like 20 or 30 bucks a month, which may sound like a lot to you. This is probably cheap, basically free. Um, but to have the site working and really friendly and usable and easy for you to administrate I think will pay off in spades in the long run uh, they will probably have tools that help you collect emails automatically using a tool like say MailChimp which is free for up to 2,000 members or AWeber or Constant Contact or any of the many companies that do email services uh, which by the way would probably be another 20 bucks a month um, but honestly if you're gonna do this and especially if you're selling nice pieces like this that sell for hundreds of dollars at a time maybe 450 bucks $1,400 I mean, all you got to do is sell one of these a month, and you'd be covering all your expenses. So, honestly, I think it's a worthwhile investment because it will expand your reach beyond just the, the shows that you go to in person. Your stuff is visual enough and cool enough and has a wide enough applicability. There's no reason you shouldn't be selling 10 of these a week online because on the Internet, you can reach far beyond the shows that you normally go to in person. You could be selling, you know, you could be at a, a show in Florida selling 10 of these a week in California, right? And that's what I'd like to see happening for you. So let's do just a couple more here. Commissions, example. Okay, so you take private commissions. That's cool. Right, so you do custom work. Well, absolutely, that's worth a bit more. And I, again, I would show some more behind the scenes of you doing that sort of thing. Uh, people that are into this kind of art are into the artist and the artistic process. A lot of them, as you know, they see their purchase of these things as sort of a patronage of supporting a creative person. And I, would, uh, I might even shoot a behind the scenes video that shows how you do some of this stuff so that the people that are into it can get really into it. 
You also don't have, uh, and maybe this is deliberate, but you don't have Facebook or Twitter links or any of that other stuff, and you don't have to be great at it. You don't have to do a lot of it, but it can help you attract more customers, and I don't think it could hurt you to go over to Facebook and have a page there so that people can follow you and uh, put up something down in the footer here that says, like me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter or or share your objects on Pinterest. That's a new one, that, a newer one where you show images. You have such pretty images here. I think that could be worth it to you. So. Anyway, I hope gave you a whole bunch of ideas here, but I think the fundamental one is you got to be more commercial. You got to ask for the sale, just like in the booth. You got to be real clear about what you're offering, and then ask for what you want, which is click on this and buy it, and make it real clear the relationship between here's a guy, a friendly guy named uh, Ed who does this cool stuff. You should buy some of it, and here's how you do it. A, B, C, A plus B plus C equals D, and you want that D, which in this case is add to cart and purchase. Um, I think the best way to do that would be to put it on a shopping platform because it would make a lot of this administration easy and then you could spend your time instead on either making more art, which is probably what you want to do, or what I'd recommend, which is doing some social media, uh, sending out emails to the list you have, or maybe even starting a blog. All those things that can build up an audience for you that can continue to make you money on a more passive income basis when you're not driving around the country going to art fairs and you could do that online with the extra energy you have if this site was making some more money for you, which I think it can. So I hope that's helpful for you, Ed. I appreciate you coming by and being part of Art Fair Insiders. I'm glad you won this free website review from uh, expertwebsitereviews.com. And like I said, I run clickmillionaires.com, which is a free online coaching service. We have a big forum, a community there um, with members from all over the world, and we talk about how to build businesses online like this, and it's free for anybody that reads my books. So you could go out and check if you haven't already. Uh, Click Millionaires is the new one, How to Build an Internet Lifestyle Business You Love, and uh, that would be right up your alley, I think, there, Ed. So you've already figured out what you want to do. Now we can help you do it even better. And to the rest of you, if you'd like a, a website review like this, expertwebsitereviews.com, you can order one of these and I'd be happy to help you out. Or come on in and join the upgraded level of Click Millionaires, which is called Masterminds, and we'll do this for you for free. So thanks for being here, and thanks for watching, and thank you, Ed, for contributing during the ArtFairInsiders.com pledge drive. I'm Scott Fox from ClickMillionaires.com and ExpertWebsiteReviews.com.